This is systolic mama in the left sternal border. Next, uh, X-ray shows a large heart, plethoric lungs. ECG uh, was in sinus rhythm. Next, echocardiogram. So this was the echocardiogram showing left atrial, left ventricular volume overload. You can appreciate the VSD that is coming up. Show back, please go back. Go back, allow it to run. Okay. Yeah. So this is the this is the four chamber. As we are sweeping towards the aorta, the VSD comes up. The VSD is having a muscular ridge below the aortic valve, and it measured somewhere around six to seven millimeters. Uh, the interventricular gradient was 60 millimeters. Run the picture. That's a still image. Okay, that's a still image. So that that still image again showed it's around six to seven millimeters. Uh, is there any other picture on the echo? Okay, so it is between six and seven perimembranous. Yeah. Srija, what did you get as a, the pulmonary artery pressures and all? Pulmonary artery pressure was a 35 millimeters of mercury systolic and a mean of 22. Can you hear Dr. Srija's uh, mic also? Say that again. Okay, we have to be louder. Pulmonary artery pressures were systolic of 33 milli 35 millimeters of mercury and a mean of 22 millimeters of mercury. It was normal. Okay. So, so okay, then. Shiva, we had a question. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what is the distance between the VSD and the valvular structures? How far is it away? Okay. Uh, from between the aortic valve and the VSD, there was about. Four millimeter separation. It was a thick sort of muscular uh, 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 gap, but in terms of tricuspid valve, it was reasonably closer. Uh, yeah, the, the there was uh, you, you we can show you a live short axis view. Uh, get on to uh, I, uh, push the I up. Get on quickly to your left short live axis. short axis view. Dr. Santosh, my colleague, is going to show the echo. Make the echo big echo on the screen. Yeah. Put the color there, then they will uh, color on. The, yeah, get the VSD out. It's more uh, posterior. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the place where the VSD is coming off from. Get a sharper quality image. The person on the right can take over the probe. Jesse, do you feel we have all the information? We need some more. What else do you need? Siva. Yes. Will you be using? Would you be using transesophageal or transthoracic? The, 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 we, we, the normal practice for us in our cath lab is to use only transthoracic echocardiography so with the the sedation echo. using yeah. a combination of ketamine and medazolam. And we don't employ transesophageal echocardiogram usually in our perimembranous VSD device closures at all. Question Show the perimembranous VSD. Sit you are down. Sit down. Jesse, Sit. what else do we need from information? Uh, I, I, you're going to show us a left ventriculogram, I assume. Yeah, so left ventriculogram we are going to show now. Show the hand angiogram. Up, so, so this is the this is the ventri left ventriculogram. Freeze the frame. Yeah. Okay. So that so that th you you can appreciate a small separation from the uh, aortic valve. So the aortic valve is reasonably safe, but I can tell that uh, in the short axis view it was little bit closer towards the tricuspid valve. Now our our decision is to, uh, the, I mean the, the options that are available here are, we in our routine practice we may either put in a amplitzer duct occluder one, or a similar device, or uh, since the hole is between six and seven we will not be comfortable to use an ADO two device. The second option will be to use a muscular VSD device. Since uh, muscular, uh, like uh, yeah, the, we don't want too much of protrusion in the right ventricular side, quite often we may be using an amplitzer duct occluder device. However, the other options that are available are, Occlutech has made a new perimembranous VSD device which is much more uh, <laughs> like uh, softer and has got a yeah, tilt cable mechanism where the cable doesn't hold the device perpendicularly. So after the device gets positioned across the membranous septum, there will not be a tension on the cable as which is seen in ADO1 device or in a muscular VSD device.
So uh, the options are a ADO1, a muscular VSD device, a occlutec perimembranous VSD device, or something similar to what I used in the previous patient, one of these LEPU memo power devices or life tech devices. What will be the options that you think, Samir? Say the last question again. I was talking with uh, Maybe. Suleiman. Maybe we can see what the what the audience thinks. Are there any strong opinions on the device <laughs> choice here? Yeah, I, I would go for an ADO one, um, and uh, uh, for the reasons that you mentioned, one, it works. It's not a huge duct, and you don't have anything on the right hand side. So I think that would be my my choice. The question is, is sizing. Um, uh, if it's a six to seven on echo, it may be a, if they used color, uh, it, that may be overestimated. So I would do it on the angiogram. Um, and go for either an 8.6 or a 10.8, depending on the measurements. But 8.6 may be enough. All right, what's, so we, we what's, have the one vote a, what's the downside of a 10.8 as opposed to 8.6? Well, o only a question of size. So 10.8, I would have no qualms about it either. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the, the ways in which we can do this, if suppose if you are going to be doing it from the transvenous axis, whether we are going to be crossing from the LV, making an AV circuit and then advancing the sheath, or try to cross from the right ventricular surface, anti-grade, and uh, go across the VSD. So in this uh, patient, Dr. Strija decided to, like basically when she was pulling the catheter from the pulmonary artery towards the uh, right ventricle, under, like the pressure was connected to the uh, tip of the catheter, and she could record a left ventricular pressure when she fell into this particular location on LAO view. So she realized that the catheter tip is just facing the uh, VSD. And the next step that she has done already is next. So she advanced the guide wire through that into the left ventricle and, and that has been taken into the ascending iota. So this was anti-gradely a catheter has crossed now. And that is where we are now. So this is where the catheter is. The catheter has gone into the left ventricle and is turning into the Sifa. iota. So what we are planning to do now will be get a... Siva? Yes? What catheter is that that this, you use? This is a Judkins right coronary five. catheter. Five French. Five French. Yeah, Judkins right coronary five French with a 3.5 millimeter curve sorry 3.5 centimeter curve so what we do here is we are leaving the guide wire there and i am taking out the catheter the junction between the stiffer part and the softer part of this amplat super stiff guide wire is actually lying now in the lv apex can you connect it to the aortic pressure as well so that we have a continuous aortic pressure i'll, I'll do that yeah, can you open you the aortic the pressure? Wire Siva? Yes. The wire, the wire in you said is a uh, super stiff? The wire is a super stiff. However, the last six centimeters are softer. And the softer part, the junction of the softer part to the stiffer part is now at the apex of the left ventricle. Okay. Can you see that? Hmm. Yeah, we see that. Okay. Open Shiva, tell us, uh, do you feel you have enough wire in the aorta to... Uh, run your device up or do you feel like this will kick I, back out? I, no, I am I am actually going to uh, sorry, try sorry, to sorry. enter into the apex of the left ventricle with my sheath. She is breaking out. Just, just Keep her sedated. Sorry, I, she becomes I think that's correct. You, you, you should, you're better off deploying this in the LV rather than the aorta because it might pull through. Uh, I'm not sure what sheath you're going to use. The PDA sheath will turn you into the apex much more easily than uh, a 45 degree sheath. Okay, so right now what I am so go I am using is yeah, something similar to your PDA sheath. Uh, now, yeah, they just a little please. bit more. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's enough. Now I'll peel the sheath inside. Peel it inside. So now I'm taking the dilator out. The child is slightly waking out of sedation. Little bit relaxed the loop. Because it is a live transmission, it's taking a little longer time. Otherwise, a yeah, single initial sedation, we could have 
like you know completed the procedure now i'm going to withdraw the wire slowly out sheet is uh, shall i pull it out a little bit now yeah. okay the sheet is not kinking now so i'm going to connect the sheet to the pressure again so so we have a pressure can you change the color so that it is easy sitting okay so one is in the left ventricle one is in the femoral artery the two pressures change the colors please so now i'm going to be taking the occlutec perimembranous vsd device now the this some ectopics ventricular wait 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 mm. right some don't push it inside there is a supraventricular tachycardia Can you give one? What do size have you? What size have you one, chosen, Shiva? No, one second. I'm planning to choose a six, but second there is a supraventricular tachycardia. Just a second. Yeah. Can we get uh, some metoprolol again? Yeah. Quickly get it. Two mg. Or do you have adenosine? Whatever you are, which, whichever you are getting fast. You, you can just try a thump on the chest, and that very often works as well. Okay. Let me see. Okay. No. Okay. Let me try to give one ectopic with this sheet. Yeah. Okay. Now it's not it's not cutting down. Okay. The systolic give pressures are around 60, 65 to seventy. Can you give metoprolol? Okay. Adenosine. Okay. Adenosine. Okay. Yeah. Is is it big? Can you make this screen bigger? Yeah. I'll keep showing you the pictures. So uh, what we are how currently doing is it? trying to load some. Mister, how much? Okay. Give. some adenosine and trying it in the meantime get some metoprolol also should we give it through the yeah uh, which one? no anyway it's yeah it's can you uh, 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 get the Salen small sheet also take some flush dr joe it was not getting flush terminated flush. with a ventricular flush extra fast. stimulus that i am trying out you from the fast, no? uh, yeah just try it and see yeah, it yeah, yeah it's broke, broken broke. it's broken now yeah broken yeah yeah no. Okay, so r right now what we are going to do will be uh, load it on a six sheet. Yeah, so we will demonstrate the device. Open the device. Sujay, can you help in opening the yeah. jar? Yeah, sure. Ah, yeah. that will. So this is the Aclutex uh, <laughs> perimembranous VSD device. I'll try to get closer to my finger. It's not only light on fluoroscopy, but also on camera. Can you switch it off? No, sorry, switch it on. Are you able to see it yeah. there? Yeah, it looks like a very heavenly device. <laughs> okay, the 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 uh, the waist of the device is six millimeter. I think I have to keep my hand here continuously. The waist yeah. is six millimeter, and it has got a four millimeter flange on either side. So that means the fourteen millimeter is the LV disc. 14 14 and the pa disc is 2 mm larger so that is uh, 6 plus 4 10 so 10 on the pa side a uh, 10 on the sorry 10 on the rv side 14 on the lv side and in between the waist is 6 okay can you stretch that a bit let's see how much it stretches for adult side folks like me sorry it's too small that my fingers are looking yeah. so large can you see that no you just yeah no, it looks good okay have, uh, but but after loading i will show you showing. yeah can you open if, if you used an 86 um plus a device you would uh, have a a short a smaller uh, left sided rim why did you choose some, one with 14 when you're so close to the aortic valve but only 4 mm sorry joe it is not closer to the can you show the first picture again or show this frozen frame again this frozen frame make it bigger I think yeah. you had at least 4 mm, right? Yeah, yeah. There is there is a there is a good amount of gap, uh, Joe. The advantage of this particular device is that there is no tension on the cable after the cable delivers the device in its requisite position. Because it is a tilt mechanism. Can you see that? Now, can you make it larger? Uh, like further. Okay. Focus. You see now that there is a complete tilt of the device. so whatever be the alignment of the ventricular septum it will adapt to that orientation 
without any tension on the cable. Now I am loading it. That is how it. That's how it loads. So now I am going to load it again under underwater seal. Yeah. Push. Okay. Now it is a routine practice for us to have the sheath tip connected continuously to pressures, and we come under pressure guidance as well. So currently, what we are doing is the catheter is recording LV pressure. I slowly open out this device. Is not seen so well, so I am going to use some fluoroscopy. In some cord. So it looked like Dr. Srija was telling it is in some cord. Oh no, it is not. Can you show me the echocardiogram? Where we are? Epical four chamber. See, I want a proper picture. You take over. Give me the. So Shiva, were you just not able to pull it back so easily? What made you? I will. I, I just wanted to That's see where device. it is lying. That's the device in the LV. Okay. So maybe maybe take your hands out. I will try to. Uh, the device. The sheet? You see, yeah. the device is having uh, some sort of memory of normality. Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. that? Mm. I have not seen this before, so I am trying to again open it out. Let's hold the sheet. Then. Mm. It opened well outside. Okay, make it make a mag out of it. Maybe it didn't like the mm. stretch and sink. Is it possible that uh, is it possible that I am I am near the so mitral valve apparatus, Rija? Can you again show me echo? Just show me where the tip of my sheath is. Try to get go more into the LV. Yeah. Okay, can I can I come a little bit more closer to the septum and then try to open? Mm. Take your hands out. Just keep. Just it looks like I'm I'm quite out. Yeah. Okay, now it is forming. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is there is some memory abnormality of this device. Now it has reformed again. Okay, now uh, we are going to be coming uh, closer to the septum. Okay, now I have started seeing the RV pressures. That means I am facing the RV. Now echo again. Can we see our uh, pressures, please? Pressures are. Can you make the pressures big? Pressures big. Yeah. So my sheet so is. We lose echo by doing that. So you can. Is there any way to show both pressures okay. and okay. echo? Okay. Okay. Can you make one? the pressure smaller? Echo bigger. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, just move your camera to the. the no pressure yeah. bigger this pressure there fluoro cut like uh, give only echo and uh, give only echo and hemodynamics yeah fine perfect so the the device seems to be okay there so now i am going to okay strija i'll 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 just deploy the rv disk hands out Okay, now can we see again another echo? Uh, in the meantime, LV angiogram, pigtail ready. Show the echocardiography and the hemodynamics continuously. Can you come out? Yeah. Put one ice cap. Come to AP view so that. Uh, come to AP view so that. Uh, Yeah, echo comfortably. You can do it. Look at the aortic valve is far away. Hello. Yeah. Okay, color out. And uh, tricuspid valve. Color. Not much of leak. Okay. So we'll do an LV angiogram now. Short. Injection ready. Uh, what is the weight of this child? Twenty. Twenty. Get about 20 mL at 15 rate, 1000 psi. Okay.
Okay, can you show me on same LAO projection that you originally got for the LV angiogram? What was the projection? Same 45, 30 now again? Come down. Yeah. Ready for injection? Ready? It looks fine. Small How does it look? Yeah, small amount of leak, correct. The cable but that, it, that looks like it is going through the fabric. Mm. So what I will do is, I will release the... Uh, can you uh, double check tricuspid valve, other valves, make sure no other tri issues? Tricuspid valve did not have any leak at all somewhere. I'll, I'll show you now. Uh, okay. Yeah, it looked clean. Okay, tricuspid valve color. See, the tricuspid looked fine. Show the aortic. Aortic looks good. The device looks good. Short axis of good. the left ventricle. Hmm. Yeah, color. It looks fine. Let, let us release and then let us see it. There is a, the, cable, the cable is still passing through the tricuspid valve. So, uh, camera here. So, the, the mechanism of release is, uh, I'll show. So, it was released. So, now we will do one final LV angiogram and then one echocardiogram. Can you get ready? So this was a uh, Aclutec perimembranous 6 millimeter device. The we are in the central waste part. We are yep. not actually yep. oversizing. The reason, uh, so so the chances of a radial stress uh, st stretch on the margins of the VSD causing an injury to conduction is possibly less likely. Again. Since the device has got a peculiar shape where the RV disc actually keeps moving away from the right ventricular wall, there is no clamp on this de uh, device. So it is hoped that the chances of AV nodal conduction disturbances are possibly little less even though some sort of proper studies have to be done. Uh, the echocardiogram shows not much of, uh, no, there is no AR at all. Tricuspid valve? Tricuspid, there is a trivial leak. However, that does not seem very significant. Yeah. When you mentioned that uh, more study needs to be done, do you mean EP study or <laughs> monitoring? What would you do? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah periodic ECG monitoring of a patient. And That's what I thought. Okay. I thought you were making uh, AV node blockage because of the SVT you had earlier. There is some flow on this mm. on the superior edge of yeah. the device, right? Mm. But I hope it should uh, it should settle out possibly with time. Jesse, what would you do based off this? How would you monitor this patient at your hospital? Okay. We would uh, we would admit overnight on continuous telemetry, probably repeat an echo in the morning, and uh, if there was no other go to LAO? We would necessarily make too much of that. We, we give patients a bit of a free pass if it's catheter induced, uh, especially in children. Shiva, you would send the patient home the same day, next day? How do you do it? Uh, norm, nor, 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 normally, we keep perimembranous VSDs for 48 hours. Repeat an electrocardiogram and an echocardiogram at the end of 48 hours. If there are no ECG disturbances at all, then we are happy. And then we see them at the end of one month. We don't give with any echo, no echo. With echo. One month later, we see them with again ECG and echo. Every visit will be combined with ECG and echocardiography. The next visit will be one month, three months, six months, 12 months. We, uh, we discharge at the end of 48 hours. We don't give any aspirin. We give periprocedural heparin, 100 units per kilogram and one dose of cefuroxime, an antibiotic, and no further antibiotics, no further heparin. It's coming out. The, the sheets will be removed immediately in another sheet? few minutes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have taken a six French 
venous sheath and a five French arterial sheath both will come out shortly. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Shiva Kumar, once again, congratulations on a great case. Uh, thank you very much for uh, a great two cases today. Thank you very much.